Hey, what's up guys? Benny here and it's now 2021. So I'm going to give you my 21 biggest tips for Call of Duty Warzone that you can add to your game to help make you a better player for the year ahead. Now, I've put these tips together to help you whether you're brand new to Warzone or a professional player, there is something for everyone. Also, please do go ahead and share your top tips down in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, please take a second to hit that subscribe button as 71% of you watching are not subscribed to the channel and you'll get better at Warzone, I promise. And if you're not already, make sure to go follow me over on Twitter and Instagram with the links down in the description. I've got loads of exciting projects and opportunities for you to get involved in this year so make sure to go follow me but let's get into the tips now my first tip for warzone that will hugely improve your game if you start actively thinking about it is your positioning positioning will fundamentally have the biggest impact on you winning more gunfights and more games of warzone now there's a couple of things that you can do to improve your positioning First of all, when you're getting into a gunfight, try and secure a power position. This could be something from a strong piece of cover like the crest of a hill, a big rock, or the top of a building. Whatever gives you the best view of an enemy's location but gives you the most amount of cover and escape routes possible. So when you're playing, just get into the habit of always trying to take power positions. And when you're moving to different positions, never just run in the open. Always try to have some cover nearby between you and potential enemy positions. So if you do start getting shot at, you have something that you can dive behind and then engage the fight or wait for your teammate's support. But positioning is key. My next tip for Warzone is something that you should always make sure you have, and that is the best possible loadouts if you can help it. You should always make sure that your loadouts are optimized. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this as I do cover best loadouts on the channel, so check those out afterwards. But if you're using a DMR, for example, make sure you're using the best attachments, perks, and secondary weapon because it really does make a huge difference in your ability to win gunfights consistently. Now, my next tip is to help you get your loadout drop as fast as possible. Having your custom loadout is easily the most powerful thing to have in the entire game. It allows you to not only have the best weapons in the game possible, but it also gives you your perks, which will allow you to stay off radar, survive explosions, and switch to the weapon that's going to be best suited for a situation almost instantly. So what you need to do to improve your game is learn how to get a loadout drop quickly. First of all, when you're flying in, look at where buy stations are located, then try to identify either a scavenger contract or a high loot value area such as Superstore. Now, what you go for all depends on your skill level. If you're super confident in your ability and want the most kills possible, places like Superstore are best and have a ton of loot, plus nearby buy stations to get that loadout in. However, going places like the new bunker area in airport will get you enough loot straight away to get your loadout, but not have to fight too many teams to do so. But when you're looting, don't spend more time than you need to to grab things. You should never stop moving and you'll get your loadout in no time at all. Another big tip that I've started doing a lot more recently is pay attention to what contracts are nearby to you by checking your map. Now, the reason for this is because it's a great way to figure out where enemy squads are. Players are always trying to complete contracts, and if you see a bounty disappear, for example, you know that you can push that location and find an enemy team and catch them off guard, as usually they'll be trying to complete the contract. It can also swing the other way, and if you're trying to regain back into the game, you might want to avoid an area that you're seeing a contract be picked up from, as you don't have the equipment to take on the enemy squad. Now, my next tip is all about dead silence, which for me is the most powerful piece of equipment in the entire game because it can allow you to take on entire squads without them having a clue where you are. Dead Silence for me is the only way that you can successfully push buildings as it's your only chance to catch a team unaware that won't pre-aim the stairs or the limited options that you have when you're trying to take a building. So when you can, grab Dead Silence and use it aggressively. I rarely use it to get away from enemy teams, but always use it to take on squads in 3v1 situations. But when you use it, always keep moving and make it hard to predict where you are for the enemy players. Also, when you down a player, try to always finish them off so your dead silence resets and you stay silent for longer periods of time. Next, something else to start doing is pay attention to small details like the direction that a door has been opened or closed. 
This can help you figure out which direction enemy players have gone or where they could potentially be hiding at a quick glance. You can also use this in a defensive play style when you're getting pushed by enemy players. Stand on the side of the door that the door will open to as it will allow you to get the first shot off on an opponent, as well as giving you the chance to catch them by surprise, which is incredibly powerful, especially with guns like the Diamatis. My next big tip for you to get better at Warzone is you need to try and do everything faster. Now, what I mean by this is when you're pushing a squad, don't hesitate and just commit to what you're doing. That doesn't mean just blindly run at enemies. If your plan is to sit and hold a doorway, for example, as you know the enemies are pushing from that direction, Get to that door as quickly as possible. Don't stop start every couple of seconds as it increases your chance of getting caught out by the enemy team. It's like when I'm trying to do a scavenger contract to be able to get my loadout. I presume that players are going to have UAVs or heartbeat sensors so they know where I'm going to be. For that reason, when I'm moving around the map, I'm doing it as quickly as I can, moving between cover and grabbing loot as fast as possible because every second you take gives an enemy team another opportunity to roll up on you with better equipment. So just try and increase the pace that you do everything, whether it's pushing a power position or something as simple as looting, speed is key. Next, last season, you'll probably have realized C4s just weren't in the meta at all, and everyone started using Semtexes instead. However, with the inclusion of the Black Ops Cold War weapons, C4s seem to have gotten a stealth buff and can now be thrown a little bit further again. And for that reason, you want to start using them in your loadouts because, as we all know, they're super powerful against vehicles and one of the best ways to get some easy kills. So use C4s. My next tip to get better at Warzone is one of the most effective ways to get your entire team back into the game after a squad wipe. What you want to do is go for supply runs. Now, this tactic is usually better in quads or trios, but a great way to get some quick cash and all your teammates back into the game. When your squad gets wiped, the first player out of the gulag goes for the contract. Then the second player goes to complete that contract. This means that you either get the ability to buy back anyone who fails to win their gulag, or you all get self reses plus some quick cash to be able to get your loadout drop quickly. But don't ignore the supply run contracts. This next tip is one that I cannot stress enough because it blows my mind how people just don't do it as consistently as they should. But you really need to be making sure that when you're engaging in a gunfight, you need to make sure that you've got some kind of cover. That could literally be anything from using a hill to cover your body, but you really need to be making sure that when you're playing Warzone, try and always gain some kind of advantage on your opponent, or at the very least, make it harder for them to hit you. So when you're going into a gunfight, try and identify some cover options and then take advantage of them. Which brings me on to what I think is one of the more important tips in this video and something that I've been doing a lot more recently, but know when to disengage from a gunfight. Sometimes if it looks like you're in a bad position, just retreat and use the cover to get away, as a big rock, for example, is going to cover the line of sight for a decent amount of distance, because when you disengage, you know that enemy squad is going to be pushing your last position, which gives you an opportunity to either rework the angle and pull a flank on that team, which you wouldn't have got if you had stayed and fought. And sometimes it's better just to completely disengage altogether and just live to fight another day, even if it's to do something as simple as regrouping with the rest of your squad. My next tip for Warzone is all about your trigger discipline. Just because you see an opponent doesn't mean you should start opening fire straight away. Because remember, the second you do that, you're not just going to get the attention of that enemy squad, but you're also going to attract the attention of every nearby enemy team, which could lead to you being overwhelmed. So for that reason, only start firing when you know you've got a good chance of taking down an enemy player. And also try and target the straggler of an enemy squad because he'll have the least opportunity to get into a strong position to counter you and send you to the gulag. Next, don't always finish your kill when you down an opponent. Try and use them as bait to get the rest of the squad to come out and engage you, which, if you've got a powerful position, is going to give you a bigger opportunity to pick up all three or four kills from an enemy team. My next big tip for Warzone is only push buildings if you have to. One of the biggest difficulties with pushing buildings in Warzone is there aren't that many routes for you to be able to push it, which really opens up 50-50 gunfights, which you really don't want to get yourself in. 
because the odds are enemy players in buildings are going to be watching the doorways and will also, if you don't have a dead silence, be able to easily hear you. So if you are pushing a building, if you have to, try and use jump ups or routes that are less obvious. Next, in Warzone, you always want to try and have a vehicle to help you move safely around the map. Being in the driver's seat of a big Bertha is one of the strongest positions to be in as it's so difficult to be shot out of. Also, because you can get out of a vehicle pretty much instantly, there's no negative in pushing an enemy team in a vehicle. It actually gives you the element of surprise. The amount of kills I pick up by just jumping out of a vehicle right on top of an opponent with an SMG or my Diamatis is actually ridiculous. Also, using a helicopter is going to allow you to almost always get a positional advantage on an opposing team and catch them in a bad position. They are easily the most powerful vehicle to have in the entire game. So if you can try and get one for your team to hold on to as early as possible in a game, you'll definitely get more kills overall. Another way for you to pick up more kills in Warzone and win more gunfights is to make sure that you're jump shotting and drop shotting in gunfights. It just makes you a lot more unpredictable, so harder to be hit. I also put this tip in a lot of my videos because it will make such a big difference to your gameplay. Yes, it's hard to master and do without thinking about it, but once you get the hang of it, you'll notice how many more gunfights you win because of it. I mentioned this a little bit earlier on in the video, but one of the biggest ways to improve your own gameplay in Warzone is always be thinking when you're moving around the map at what's going to provide you the most cover. Sometimes, for example, it's worth not running straight across the open of an area, but taking an extra few seconds to go around the edge of the building because there's less angles that you can be shot from. So always be thinking, what's protecting me and what route can I take to get to where I want to go that's going to give me the most amount of cover? Because this is war zone and you never know when a gunfight is about to kick off and you'll need that bit of cover to help you not get sent to the gulag. My next tip to get better at Warzone is make sure you're using the gas to your advantage. I will always try and use the gas to force enemies to run straight at me and out of powerful positions. Remember, it's those transition periods when players are moving out of cover or being forced to change positions is where you're going to get some of the easiest kills. And it also goes back to not pushing buildings. Why take a risk of pushing a building if in 20 seconds they're going to be forced to leave by the gas? So just sit outside and watch and hold them and I promise you it will pay off. And that brings me up to my next really important tip to get better at Warzone. Sometimes it's just better to take an extra 30 seconds to put yourself in a better position to win a gunfight. So many players are always trying to go at full speed all the time and get into a gunfight at the earliest opportunity. But trust me, it might not feel like it at the time, but you'll save yourself a lot more time and get a lot more kills if you take 30 seconds to make sure that you're in the best position before engaging in a gunfight, or take 30 seconds to pull off a flank to get a better angle on the enemy team. Pushing airport roof is a great example. So often they'll be watching over car dealership, but you can just take 30 seconds to run to the other side, which won't be watched, and take the grapple up and then fight them on an even playing field. Take those 30 seconds. But that leads us onto my next tip, which is don't waste your time with roof campers from a distance. How often will you fight someone and lose all your plates that's holding a roof position? Because let's be honest, even if you down them, they're going to fall straight behind cover and be able to be revived by one of their teammates. There is no point, unless you've got an airstrike, wasting your time fighting roof campers, unless you're in a position where you can get the finish. So just disengage and fight them at another time or push the building if it's in the final zone. And my final tip for this video is if you really want to get a win in Warzone, take advantage of the unlimited recon train. Not only will you be able to quickly see where the final zone will be, but you'll also have a ton of cash for completing endless recon contracts on the train. To do this, it's quite simple. Land on the train at the start of the game with your entire squad, grab the recon contract, complete the recon contract, rinse and repeat, and then go and hold the final zone. But there we have it, 21 tips to kick off 2021 to help you get better at Warzone. Smash that like button and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Bye.